My name is Thomas Scheren. I'm a professor of anesthesiology in the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. And I would like to talk to you um, about the future of hemodynamic monitoring. After we just have heard about the future of blood pressure monitoring, we will now look at uh, other hemodynamic techniques. Um, these are my uh, disclosures. Um, I would like to mention that I'm the chair of the cardiovascular dynamics section of the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine. So this is the agenda of my uh, talk. Um, I would like to convince you that uh, the future of, non uh, of hemodynamic monitoring is non-invasive, so the non-invasive techniques we will talk in the first part. Then I would introduce you to in artificial intelligence, which can be used to predict hemodynamic changes. Uh, we will talk about the visualization of hemodynamic information, which becomes more and more important. And in the end, uh, uh, sneak preview in the future of remote and wireless hemodynamic monitoring. So let's start with the non-invasive hemodynamic monitoring. <clears throat> this picture just shows you uh, that all the variables that we need for our decision making in daily practice can be uh, derived uh, non-invasively and continuously uh, as of today. So um, uh, we heard about blood pressure before but also blood flow, cardiac output, can be measured non-invasively by uh, one of these techniques, pulse wave analysis-based techniques, for example. Uh, so uh, uh, this can be done uh, non-invasively and continuously. And we just recently published this meter analysis uh, where we analyzed finger cuff um, technologies for uh, cardiac output monitoring and the pool percentage error of all the techniques from coming from 19 studies, uh, more than 500 patients, the pool percentage error was 43%. Only four of the 19 studies had a percentage error of less than 30%, which we would like to see. Um, uh, and 10 of the 19 studies had a percentage error below 45%. So the conclusion should be that these techniques are <clears throat> not yet interchangeable with the invasive reference methods like the pulmonary artery catheter derived cardiac output. So cardiac output monitoring, uh, yes, um, with less accuracy, yes, this is the case, but the trending abilities of these devices are acceptable. Uh, the trend is your friend. And in the perioperative setting, these pulse wave analysis-based monitoring methods can be used to guide uh, go-directed hemodynamic therapy. And we can also assess uh, fluid responsiveness completely non-invasively, as we did in this study, also with the cuff, uh, finger cuff uh, technology. And we measured pulse pressure variation and uh, stroke volume variation completely non-invasively. And you can see that uh, the higher the pulse pressure variation, the red dots or the stroke volume variation, the green dots were, the uh, greater was the increase in stroke volume index after a fluid administration. So pretty good predictive. And this can be used like in this study uh, for uh, goal-directed fluid therapy uh, based on the hemodynamic non-invasive uh, finger cuff technology uh, guiding the uh, pump to give the fluids as shown in this uh, example. We can even go further and not only rely on the arterial pressure curve, but on the platysmographic curve, which is, of course, uh, also non-invasive. And, and you can hardly tell which one is which curve, but both curves do pretty much give you the same information. So the information that you can derive from the arterial pressure curve, you can also derive from the pulse oximeter um, curve. And we did a study where we compared the invasive uh, stroke volume variation and pulse pressure variation with a non-invasive platysmography derived um, variability index, the PVI. And you can see here that all these um, methods compare, uh, co uh, perform comparably well, uh, although the uh, cutoff values were slightly different uh, depending on the uh, device that you use. So if we put this Altogether, we can say that non-invasive hemodynamic monitors are currently not recommended for use in patients with shock on the ICU, since these patients need arterial catheterization anyway. But for the perioperative setting, uh, for the use in high-risk surgical patients, these are more and more used to guide hemodynamic therapy and will be um, the monitoring of the future.
In the second part of my talk, I would like to introduce you to artificial intelligence, which is introduced also into hemodynamic monitoring to predict hemodynamic changes. For example, hypertension, a hypotensive event, when it becomes clinically evident here at this point, this is not the origin of the hypertension. The origin lies uh, way before that. And the uh, organism tries to compensate blood pressure uh, until uh, uh, it finally becomes hypertensive. And it would be very nice if we could uh, see these subtle changes in hemodynamic variables before hypertension even occurs uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, in the following minutes. And this is uh, the way it works. So it, um, we can make use of information that is hidden in the arterial blood pressure waveform, different uh, features telling you about the stroke volume, the contractility, the uh, afterload, and so on, which cannot be seen by the eye uh, of the doctors, but which, which can be seen by artificial intelligence and, and can be analyzed. And this way, uh, we uh, have developed this hypertension uh, prediction index, which can predict hypertension before it actually occurs. And the idea is that we can uh, prevent a decrease in uh, blood pressure and not, uh, and thereby preventing, um, uh, be proactive, uh, treating uh, hypertension and not wait until the hypertension occurs as it is of the day and then treat the hypertension after it has occurred. So this is the idea. And this is the first study showing that, uh, that principle that I just mentioned. So these, uh, Authors used uh, the arterial pressure waveform, divided it into several parts, uh, derived, uh, looked at more than 3,000 individual features of this uh, single arterial pressure waveform and combined this uh, to, with uh, these features and came up with a prediction model, which then had been tested in different uh, databases and patient uh, databases from the ICU or from the OR and had been validated. Uh, um, internally and externally with uh, external data. And here you see the prediction uh, of this new index, predicting hypertension uh, before it occurs uh, is very good, while the prediction of changes in blood pressure one, three, or five minutes before that event was uh, 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 not even telling you. It's just like flipping the coin. It cannot tell you uh, if hypertension occurs. We repeated that study because we thought this is too good to be true. But in fact, we could repeat this in uh, patients undergoing major surgery, that the HPI, the Hypertension Prediction Index, actually was the best predictor of hypertension. This is five minutes before the hypertension occurred. And we compared that to other hemodynamic variables here, like cardiac output, stroke volume, uh, pulse pressure, the stroke volume variation, shock index, none of these variables were as good as predicting hypertension um, as the hypertension prediction index was. They might tell you other important things about your patients, but they were not able to predict hypertension. So the HPI uh, could actually predict pre uh, reliably um, hypertension up to 15 minutes. Um, these are the results for five minutes, but the same were seen 10 and five, 15 minutes before the uh, actual events. And it could predict changes in, in uh, hypertension better than changes in any other hemodynamic variable can do. And this can also be done non-invasively um, in the near future. Um, it's not on the market, but these arterial pressure waveform can also be derived non-invasively, as we just heard. And you can use the same algorithm to predict in a similar manner uh, than with the in invasively derived arterial pressure waveform. So, and this will uh, allow uh, or widen the range of patients who might benefit from this technique, patients who do not have an arterial pressure uh, uh, line uh, can be managed uh, with such a non-invasive technology. And that this works, uh, the um, hypertension prediction index has been shown in this study in 100 patients undergoing hip surgery. And by using of this uh, hypertension prediction index, they could reduce the incidence of hypertension from 88 to 48 percent in their uh, population. And this is the HYPE study published in JAMA recently, uh, which uh, did uh, also use this hypertension prediction index. It's called early warning system here. They used it also in patients undergoing major abdominal surgery. 
and they looked at the time weighted average of hypotension spent during the case uh, in these two groups uh, a standard group and a, a group using this new hpi prediction index um, and they could actually show that by using this uh, index the um, time weighted average of hypertension could significantly uh, be reduced uh, not to zero but uh, significantly reduced the next topic I would like to talk to you is the visualization of hemodynamic information. So we get a lot of information and these are ways of uh, showing uh, the information in a, a nice way to the user so that he can make use of it. And this is an example of, of target screens, for example, where you can define a target where you want to be. And this indicator tells you if you are off the target or be in the target. These are other ways uh, to show you the trends uh, of your uh, patients. And this are, is another example of digital methods to, to make the circulation and the hemodynamics of your patient visible and again define target ranges where you would like to uh, um, have your patient within. And this information can also be monitored digitally to the caregiver wherever he is. Uh, if he's walking around in the OR or on the ICU or in, on his uh, smartphone or smartwatch, uh, even the graphical displays are, are, have been developed. So this is the future of visualization of hemodynamic information. And the last point I would like to discuss with you is the remote and wireless hemodynamic monitoring, which is already on the way. There have been a, no a lot of wearable sensors developed in the recent um, past, which can uh, be connected to whatever device um, and uh, deliver this information remotely um, sorry and um, this is um, uh, just a recent publication showing how this could be used to make uh, more ICU beds uh, more smart on the normal ward by using such uh, a system and this might uh, reduce the time of um, uh, that the patient is not found on the ward dead the next morning by intermittent spot check monitoring, but these intelligent systems may warn early the physician to go and look what, what is wrong. And last thing, the smartphones can also be used for uh, hemodynamic monitoring. These are applications that are now coming up. Um, I just show you here some uh, uh, applications that have recently been developed for the market. And with that, I come to my conclusion. The future of hemodynamic monitoring is non-invasive, wireless, and intelligent. Non-invasive monitoring is a feasible alternative to invasive monitoring in continuously assessing not only blood pressure, but also blood flow and fluid responsiveness. Although these techniques are not yet interchangeable with the reference techniques, artificial intelligence is applied to arterial pressure waveform to predict hypertension reliably up to 50 minutes before its occurrence. The visualization of hemodynamic information helps us to understand complex hemodynamic interactions and decision-making. And finally, remote and wireless monitoring techniques are upcoming and will allow an early detection of deterioration in many areas with currently no or minimal monitoring at all, like on the general watch. Thank you very much.